the alone. You know, Titanic has it. And um, when you think about the word of, uh, of, of alarms, as far as what the definition are, uh, of alarms are, it's, it's, it's warning signs. You know, we have um, fire extinguishers. They're warning signs, they're warnings of, of fire. Another one is Proverbs 16 and 18, and we hear it, it says, before pride comes before fall. Another translation is that uh, God warns us before destruction shows up. It's inevitable. And a couple of the scriptures that I gave, and we don't touch them, is pretty much God gives us warnings. But we we some whew, we some stubborn folks. We ignore the warnings. We don't take heed to the warnings. And sometimes we just outright just ignorant of a warning. It says my people die daily for the lack of knowledge. Some of us don't recognize a warning when it's in front of it. You know, I always tell God when I need some stuff, I need bricks. You know, I'm kind of one of them people with the railroad crossing where it says, you know, do not go here. It's got ding, 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 and the flashing lights, and then you got the whole thing that comes out to stop you. And what happened, and Sister Alicia, I know you can attest to it because I told you, you may hear it again. God kind of gave me this message as an example with my daughter, with my granddaughter. And um, we were at my house. And y'all, when I say this, it's gonna be childlike, but he keep he, he talking to all of us and how the hitch is, it's gonna get you. But um, I was dealing with my granddaughter and she was at the house and you know, she's a little video or something, so they in the next stage where they like to crawl and stand on it. So she's standing like on the edge of my uh, love seat, just bouncing, just bouncing, just bouncing. And I'm on the phone acting with Sister Alicia and I'm talking. I was like, no, you don't sit your butt down. No, but you don't sit down, if you don't sit down, if you don't sit down. If you don't sit down. And I was telling Alicia because I was getting aggravated. I was like, I said, she just too hard at it. You ain't listening, won't do what I'm just telling you. I said, you ain't gonna be satisfied until I tell pop your butt. Well, okay. Pop a butt, why she boo hoo cry, whatever. What did she got? Five, ten minutes later, she back at it again. Jumping, jumping, bouncing, bouncing. Woo, it's fun. And again, I'm fussing, fussing. Now that I got aggravated, because I'm trying to have a conversation, and I'm too busy yelling at Noby and can't have a conversation on the phone because I'm too busy trying to listen to her because she ain't listening. And I'm just like, you ain't gonna be satisfied till you fall and bust your butt or you hurt yourself. And no sooner than I said it, I literally heard, hmm, and what about you? God does it the same way. He said, how many times do I give you all? Me, I told you, you deal with the messenger first. Warning after warning after warning. After warning after warning. And we don't pay no attention to the warning. We ignore the warning because we're just having some fun or whatever else. And then, you know, we still keep doing the same thing over and over again. Okay, let me put it in the line of How many times have we sinned? Sinned after sinned after sinned. Did some stuff that we weren't supposed to do and God done told us and you know you ain't got no business doing that or being there or whatever the case may be. And we'll, we'll stop for a minute. But in the flesh, it gets the best of us and we'll do it anyway. Y'all real and transparent. Okay, I'm mean, yeah, y'all yeah, might go, okay, well, listen. I, I, let, I do more layman terms. Because, you know, people don't be transparent and they talk about their issues or their stuff. Uh, you had any people when you say addiction, you smoke cigarettes. Oh, my. Warning. It's a warning label on cigarettes, right? It says, warning. Smoking cigarettes can cause cancer. Smoking cigarettes has carbon monoxide. Surgeon General's warning. That's all good and dead, and that's, that's man's warning. But are we listening to God's warning? So we'll do it in God will convict us. Now, you know you ain't supposed to be doing that. Or you know you're not supposed to. And then send people, girl, why are you doing it? That's so nasty. You don't pollute your mind. Then they put it to the situation where you got, um, you know, certain environments now and workplaces where it's got these big no smoking signs. All these little signs that you see, but we ain't knowing them. That's what other people, God ain't talking to me. Have y'all ever heard the situation? It's not even a joke. Uh, where, and Holy Ghost, help me tell this thing right. Have you ever heard a saying where, you know, people have faith and they believe on God and it's like, well, God, you know, I think what it was the situation, the person got stranded out somewhere. And they were like, I believe that the Lord is going to save me. I believe that the Lord is going to save me. He said he would never leave me nor forsake me. He's going to save me. Well, you just sit here on this little island and you got this little tugboat. Well, doo -doo. Came going through and was like, hey, I can help you. Let's get a body here. No, I'm waiting on the Lord. Doug go talk to him and he, he, he keep on and moving. Now, see, I know I'm changing the story because I don't remember it kind of, but y'all follow when I'm drifting. Okay, so he's still sitting on the island waiting, waiting, waiting. 
And it's like, Lord, I believe that you're going to help me, you're going to rescue me, and all this good stuff. Well, guess what? Next, maybe hour or two, whatever it was later, man, speedboat, jet skis, and this little friend, you know, I'm making this up as I go along. Praise the Lord. They come along and say, well, hey, we got an extra ride. You can jump on the back and you can get a body and just get some strength. It's getting nightfall, you're going to have nothing to eat. You know, I've got all kind of whatever. Man's like, no, I'm waiting on God. I'm going, I'm just going to wait. He said he's going to do it. Now, you believe in God said he's going to do what he's going to do, and you sit there, you wait, you wait, you wait. All right, now, third time roll around, it's a big old cruise ship. Mm, you know, they docked on the island for whatever reason. And they see this man, it's like, well, you ain't got to stay here. Come on with us. You even got a whole crew of the people. Yeah, come on, it'll be all right, blah, blah, blah. Man on the island didn't go. He blocked it, so... Fast forward a long story short, the man died. So when the man went to heaven, you know, he got a bone to pick with, with the Lord. He's like, listen, now you said you never believed me ever say me, and I was stuck down there on that island all this time, and you never showed up. And then more say, as the story goes, the translate what the story goes, it's like the Lord told him, it's like, listen, I sent a tugboat after you. I sent some party friends, some speed folks, and everything else after you, and I even sent a whole cruise ship with other people. And you didn't get on it. So who's at fault? Who are you? And my point of the, how he gave that scenario is God will give us signs. He'll give us warnings and we'll ignore them. We do it with, we do it with relationships. You know, they say that joke ain't too good. You have somebody. You know, you got to get it bad, Mark. I understand that. But some God is consistent about some stuff. And he constantly tells you, nah, that might not be the right one for you. But we lean to our own understanding. And we're trying to figure out some stuff. So... We don't listen or we ignore them signs. You know, one of the things that God always uses me to uh, kind of give an example. And I was going to be funny, but I didn't want to tell you nobody. I said, you know, y'all got some medicine in your pocketbooks, Tylenol or whatever else. And there's a big warning label on that. You know, it may cause drowsiness. Do not operate equipment while taking this medicine or under the influence of this medicine. You know, all these little symbols. And so, because we get, huh, I don't know, I'm going to have a little glass of wine and see, you know, how that's what the instructions on the bottle told you not to fix that. But because we so prideful in ourselves and think that we know better than the physician or the medical staff or whatever the research, we basically play a Russian roulette with our life. And we may or may not, it may not have, and see, some medicines don't have the same effect. I mean, I'm just making a point. I'm just hoping, you know, kind of laying the foundation where y'all can get what I'm saying. But we take it upon ourselves and we kind of push the end belt and do it in. Okay, y'all, y'all follow me so far because I'm, I'm like, this is how God gave it to me. I'm just like, ooh, Lord, have mercy. We just hard headed. But we'll ignore the warnings. We'll ignore the warnings in relationships. We'll ignore the warnings in our health. You know, and I, I can say this because I'm a beautiful, voluptuous woman. Mm-hmm. But they say you eat too many cheeseburgers and hamburgers and everything else if you don't take care of yourself and do exercise properly, can clog up your arteries, can cause you health issues, can have heart attacks. But God is merciful. And see, sometimes it's in that lack of our knowledge. Well, maybe you didn't get that part of information, or maybe it was this, and sometimes it ain't food, it's stress. Sometimes it's staying in a situation longer than what you're supposed to and not leaving when you're supposed to that causes you harm. Hear me. God saw the destruction. Y'all know the story with, with Lot, right? Sovereign and Lord was all kind of craziness going on and happening up and down. You know, we always go to the homosexuality and everything on that. You know, y'all do know homosexuality on the man of the quote unquote sitting in the hell, right? We get caught up on this one thing lies, deceit, murder, all, all the rest of that stuff. But anyway, so God sent two angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, at the beginning, I said it was in Proverbs 16 and 18. It says, pride comes before a fall. God warns us when it says, warning comes before destruction. I told you at the beginning, the title of the message was sound and alone. It says, warning comes before destruction. God told God, by way of the angels, when he met him, he said that I'm going to destroy this place. It's you, your wife, your people, your children. Of I here. That was the first example. God gave me another example with Noah. He told Noah that he was going to flood the earth with water. That's in the beginning, that's in Genesis. He said he was sick of the world, the world became corrupt, and that man had basically corrupted it. 
and he was going to wipe it out. But God warned Noah. He told him, I'm going to destroy it by flood, and this is what I need you to do. I need you to build me an ark. And he gave him, I think it was 350 cubits. He gave him the instruction of what to build the ark. And then he told him uh, to get to a very uh, creature or creation and to put in the ark. Okay, that's the second example. Oh, there was, there was a couple of them. The other example is he sometimes will say some stuff and it's like, well, how does this relate to me in the world? I gave you the little worldly version talking about my granddad. But those are the two that said Noah, uh, Noah and Lot. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When it says warning comes before destruction, I gave you Ezekiel for a purpose. And Lord, help me. It's because we all have a mandate. We all have mouths. See, a lot of people ain't going to say that because they say, you know, the preacher would have us if you're not standing behind this pulpit. Each one of you are a mouthpiece of God. Each one of you has an assignment. Each one of you has been given a task. And in that midst of that, each one of you have been mandated to sound the alarm and to tell people the truth, to give them warning. And when I started out with Ezekiel, it says, if you don't warn them, the blood will be upon your hand. It said Ezekiel, he was a watchman over Israel. Israel was a rebellious people. And we rebellious. We rebellious. Parents and children, and I'm gonna say this because they hit me that way. Kids, I get mad at y'all mamas and daddies, and like we don't know squat. We just telling y'all stuff from home. You know, you don't want me to live. You don't want me to do this. I can't go nowhere. I can't do this. I can't do that. You just old. You just don't know what you're talking about. Y'all don't understand. Y'all just miss everything that we're saying, but don't recognize the reason why we're saying this morning. I've been down that path. I've been down that road. And I know what happened here, what I hear, well, I'm not you. I take the mornings and apply what needs to be applied, and I'm not going to do that. The ending is still the same. You just going to go through it differently. But what God made you aware is, when I say this and I speak to the, to the, to the young adults, to the children, to the, to the babies, the warning comes out of a place of love. The warning comes out of a place of protection. You know, the word of God says, he said, it's not his desire that any man should perish. He warns us. He wants us to get it right. It's like we not, and y'all heard it earlier, it doesn't matter what we done done, any of your play with it get mixed up. He warns us. Oh no, no, you did that yesterday. Okay, well today's a new day. If you got breath in your body, guess what? I got another opportunity to get it right. But he does it out of love. He does it out of protection. So he warned Noah, I'm gonna destroy the earth. You know, you gotta miss some stuff that's been happening, but I'm gonna if you follow the instructions, if y'all notice, that's why, I gave, that's why I gave you all the stuff so you can go back. Sometimes you say, don't trust the preacher. You go back and read the word for yourself. You want to work for God, go directly to God's word. But um, we know what helped me. Because what I'm trying to do is make sure I'm aggressive through this thing. Tell a lot. Same thing. I want you to just notice something. Abraham's prayers are covered. And I, I'm going to say this, and that's kind of how God gave it to me in that same sense. You know, when we come under the cover, children, you're under the covering of your, your parents' house. You're shielded from a lot of stuff. But when you get grown and you want to get out there and go do what you want to do, you don't have that head of protection over you no more. And you're exposed. Now, if you get your prayer life right and you got your own relationship with God, you're going to be fine. God hit me with that one too. He said, well, that's the same thing as us. If we're not covered under the shelter and the covenant of God, he said, that was an example for Noah. He told Noah to build an ark. You follow the instructions. And his household was saved. There's a scripture that says, if God be saved, my whole household will be saved. Sometimes it ain't about everybody else, it's about us just doing what we're supposed to do. And our household will be saved. All right, don't believe me. Let me give you another example. But see, I'm going to get the leaders too. God get everybody. I got beat up with this word. Hear me. Jonah and the fish. Y'all remember this? We're going to go back to some Sunday school lessons. Jonah and the fish. God told uh, Jonah to go to Nivea, Nineveh, and warn the people. How many of y'all got to tell y'all to do something? I need you to go say such and such and so and so. Well, I need you to go need to plant a seed or give such and such. Whatever way you want to do it, God gave you some instructions to do it and you wrestle with it. You know, I may have told you to go give so and so fifty dollars. I ain't giving them no money. They messed up with their money. I work hard just like they work hard. How that's what I look like giving them their money. If they messed up their money, blah, blah, blah. I'm not giving them money. We argue with God. I ain't doing it. 
Okay, I'm just saying that's, that's, that's what we do. I'm just being real. All right, well, okay, God told you to do something, you didn't do it. You know, <laughs> you got a warning from your job. This is crazy how God be all this. You got a warning from your job. All right, you can be late again, you're going to get rolled up. Whatever. I had this and this and this and this was happening and whatever else. That was the first warning. That's like after the third one, but you got a whole, a whole written warning. After that is termination. Well, you didn't believe it. You were five minutes late today. You were two minutes late today. Next day, whatever else. This time you're 30 minutes late. Well, I think it's what a six month year, most jobs are high bills. Sometimes it's a year. Then you get upset when you get called into the office and tell you you lost your job. Weren't you warned? But you didn't take heed to the warnings. So anyway, here we go. Because I'm saying this to the leader because Jonah, God told Jonah <laughs> to go tell the people of Nineveh that they were going to destroy it. He didn't want to do it. So watch this. Jonah was disobedient and he basically got on the ship and they set sail and went somewhere else. Well, but now to them when they said something will creep in unaware. You know, I can come up over here and just sit out in the midst of them sit over here. There's a whole lot of people over here. <laughs> and just be all pretty. And don't nobody know, you know, hey, how y'all doing? Hey, how y'all I'm mean, you know when they said that we can tag together? Some of y'all will meet. Some of y'all will get them. I don't know, not my business, right? We're just sitting out looking the same or whatever else. Well, for lack of better words, our heck broke loose and the ship started having issues. So the people that was on the boat started looking like, what is going on? Who wasn't having all these issues? And they started investigating and discerning. Hey, wait a minute, what is that happening to this old swab something right here? Said it this was, what's going on? I gave y'all the scriptures ahead of time so y'all go back and read it for yourself. But what they said, the ship man, the captain of the ship finally came to him and said, y'all pray to y'all God or whoever it is that you're praying to and tell them to help us in this situation. Jonah, the one that God told him to go to Nineveh to warn the people, and he didn't want to do it, so he, you know, he won't do what he wanted to do. I ain't doing that. Almost destroyed the entire ship. Y'all ever heard this message, Pastor's preacher's message? Almost put everybody on that boat in a position to the way they could all could have died because of that one person's disobedience. And I say that to say, when I say it's a mandate, when you think that you are so mutable, minuscule, I'm not saying the word correctly, and that you don't matter in your little life or they ain't gonna listen to me, and I, I don't matter that one person on that boat that God told him to do something, he was disobedient. And he put everybody in jeopardy on that boat. So fast forward to what they told him to do, they prayed. And the captain finally came to his senses, like, I don't understand this. So he went to Jonah himself and said, look, this wasn't no issue until you got on this boat. So what, what's going on? What you running from? What, what, what is it? It's a problem. Y'all know situations, and oh, God help me. Clicks, because I heard it. You get around stuff and everybody is okay, and I'm not good, Lord, I feel past the spirit. Just close your eyes. You're just fine and everything is hunky dory or whatever else, and you find that somebody else come along and start planting seeds of discord. And now everybody acting all funny and something happened, but it wasn't that way till the person walked in and planted the seed. You're not paying no attention to what's happening. And you're jeopardizing everybody's salvation, per se. You're jeopardizing everybody's blessings, per se, because that person won't do right. So anyway, they prayed. I'll give you a short version. They prayed. <laughs> And the people that didn't believe to pray, the other guys were like, well, whatever. We, the captain just said, you need to pray to your God and find out what to do. Jonah, long story short, told me, he said, throw me overboard. I'm not throwing you overboard. You're going to have people killing you. So they all prayed. They all read the story to yourself. And they said, Lord, forgive us because we don't want to kill an innocent man. And they threw him overboard. Immediately when they put him out, it was smooth sailing. You don't get it now, but God will give it to you because he's going to make you go back and flick you. What is she talking about? See, sometimes God does stuff for a reason. All right, so you got Lot. You got Noah. All right, you got John. Three, 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 three biblical, biblical, biblical instructions because sometimes we always say, I don't see myself in the word. How does it relate? I told you when God started, he gave me my daughter, my granddaughter, all I hit itself would stop jumping. And I was like, well, sometimes 
she ain't gonna be satisfied till she busts the tail. God, they often say that sometimes the impact is necessary. Sometimes we need to have our butt busted. Period. Because sometimes that's the only way we're gonna learn. It's the impact that makes us learn. It's experience. God wrapping it up, it's just about this one. Here's another example. And all y'all know this one about Pharaoh. Pharaoh's army when God said to let my people go. Y'all, how many times was Moses used to warn Pharaoh? How many? How many plagues was it? How, how many times? It's a lot. Now, I ain't gonna sit there and tell you because I have to go back and look at count. It was, it was many times that he went and he told them, God said to let my people go. Pharaoh and his proper self would not, and he didn't do it. God said, plagues after plagues after plagues. Warming comes before destruction. And living destruction is just the end of something. And I'm stressing the word when I say this. Let me put it in layman terms. God will warn you before the enemy show up. It says the enemy's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. So that destruction, destruction's job is to destroy. God will warn you before the enemy shows up.